You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. We all from last year, don't we? Yes, sir. A lot of energy, a lot of passion. Leave everything out on the field. We know that we're coming in as the underdog. We're going to have to pick it up and proving people wrong. Uh, we're AC, we're expected to win. It's the game plan we're going to go out. stop them as much as we can so we have to play better offensively. And 11 and 1 we're 12 and 0 in a regional championship on the line. Well it's a funny way that the football gods work their magic. Monroe, Indiana and Burn, Indiana. Less than 10 miles apart but it took until tonight at regionals for South Adams and Adams Central to meet in the postseason. That said nobody was nobody was really complaining. Andy McDonald joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Andy? Hey, thank you, Glenn. Back in week six of the regular season, it was a soggy night, but it was all star fire. South Adams beating the Jets 42-14 on that nastiest night of weather we've seen all season. The big question, would it be a sequel for the star fires or an upset for the Jets? South Adams at AC Adams Central at your highlight zone. Game of the week. Cold but dry night out there in Monroe, South Adams ranked second in the state with a perfect 12-0 record. Adam Central ranked fourth, 11-1. That only lost to Grant Mosier and company. First quarter break highly. The extra effort to get in the end zone. Jets out to a 7-0 lead. All shorts for Grant Mosier on the cold night. And this, a short touchdown diving in for Nick Stuber to even the game up. South Adams quarterback James Arnold had a school record 471 through the air in the first matchup. AC trying to cool him down. Ben Voriel sack Joseph Collier scoop. It's knotted at seven. It's a tight game at the break. Second half head coach Michael Mosier has the game plan working to perfection highly after a long drive. He had 160 on the ground. It's 13-7 after three in favor of the home team. Adam Central, fourth quarter, every important down. The Jets, they just seem to come up clutch. Dallas Schwaller to Alex Curry, sets it up inside the one, and it'll be the trifecta for Hirely, the sophomore for the Jets. Rumbles in the end zone, 19-7 in favor of Adam Central. One last chance with about four to play for James Arnold and company. Do they have a little magic left? The quarterback heaves it up. But Schwaller there playing a little defense, comes down with the catch and the interception. AC would run out the clock, and like Kevin Garnett said, anything is possible. Adam Central wins 19-7 that final. The difference between losers and champions are their mindset. And our mindset was going in and saying that we're going to believe we're winning, and there's no other idea in our minds. We're winning this game. Adam Central is heading to semi-state. What does that sound like? Oh, it's such a great thing to hear. Uh, keep talking to players from the last year, and uh, they just keep saying that we're something special. It just took everything we got all week at practice. We had good week at practice. We were focused. Coming in the game, believing we could win, it took all we took tonight, and we got it done. You're shaking your head right now. What's going through that mind of yours? Uh, these kids work their butts off. They worked their butts off for this. We believed all week. We came in Monday and said, we're going to win this ball game. I know no one thought we could win this ball game. These kids believed they could win this ball game, and we believed it all week long, and they proved it. Okay, they did it. They proved it. I can't be more proud of them. I mean, this is, this is a testimony to the belief of these kids, a testimony to these seniors uh, who have, have pulled off the impossible, uh, and it's not impossible to us. We knew we could do it. One victory away from Lucas Oil Stadium. Next up, semi-state Adam Central at number eight, Lafayette Central Catholic. Glenn, back to you. Who the fuck? That's a 40-point swing from that week six loss to that game. Lost by 28, now one by 12. Hey, Eastside won the program's first ever sectional title Friday. Could they double down win the first ever regional crown? Eastbrook, in the way they uh, played in the 2A state title game last year. Laven Davis, though, the sophomore to Peyton Terry. Terry with the Tootsies. It's an 11-yard touchdown grab and Eastside strikes first. The men in green up 7-0. Wyatt Stevens though quiets the Blazers crowd. It's a touchdown on a 9-yard scamper and we're tied at 7. Special teams came up big for Eastside last week. They do it again here. The block punt out of the back of the end zone. That's a safety. Put two points on the board for the Blazers. They're up 9-7 to but 
That would be the end of the Blazers scoring on the night, and Eastbrook was just getting warmed up. This is the second quarter now. Ezekiel Binkert, they call him Zeke, kid's a freak. He goes 14 carries, a buck 90, 38 of them coming there. He had two touchdowns. It was 14-9 Eastbrook, and then Dylan Bragg hooking up with Isaiah Dalton for a 46-yard score, and Eastbrook goes on to end Eastside's dream season, 42-9. Eastbrook will host Andrean next Friday night for a semi-state championship. 3A regional game at Zollner Stadium. Concordia averaged over 38 points a game in its three sectional wins, but you know none of those were against top-ranked Indianapolis Chicago. Now Concordia got the ball first and they look good early. This is Brandon Davis, defense closing in. He barely gets it off and Tyler Grossman finds himself with some Hager. Touchdown. 47 yards and three and a half minutes in, Concordia leads the number one ranked team 7-zip. Now, this is Shatard's first pay play from scrimmage, and this is why they're ranked number one in the state. Dalen Taylor, just the start of a big night for him. He goes 41 yards. We're tied at seven. After a blocked punt, Concordia had that punt blocked. Great field position for Shatard. Taylor was up and over to make it 14-7. Shatard gaining some of the momentum back, but ensuing kick. Watch where it's fielded, right at the goal line. And this is Cam Johnson, he's only a junior, and he just walks through the defense and then finds some open field. He goes 99 yards for the touchdown. And Concordia, a picture-perfect kick return. They're up here, it's tied, I should say, 14 all. Taylor, though, man was a beast. 15 carries, 231 yards, five TDs. This made it 21-14. That was the score at half, third quarter. Chatard scored 28. Concordia scored zero. That was essentially the end of this one as Shatar does knock off Concordia 56-28. Concordia ends the season 7-6 overall. In 4A, East Noble undefeated. The Knights making the drive down to Grant County. You take on 11-1 Mississinawa. Mississinawa star Cade Campbell, uh, 47 carries, 310 yards last week. If that's any indication of what Mississinawa likes to do. And yeah, Mr. Campbell doing what he does. It's a touchdown in the first quarter, and Mississinawa leading there 7-3. Second quarter action, Bailey Parker, probably the MVP of the area so far this season, the senior quarterback with the keeper. East Noble takes the lead 10-7. I had mentioned that Cade Campbell, pretty much a stud. He gets the touchdown here, and Mississinawa retakes the lead at 14-10. Parker. Looking for fellow senior Hayden Jones. That's a nice little pitch and catching the senior into the end zone. East Noble up 17-14. That was the score at the half. How about the third quarter? East Noble looking good here. It is Gage Ernstberger with the great touchdown catch. Impressive as East Noble stays undefeated. They win it 30-14 at Mississinawa. They'll host number 15, Holbert, next Friday night for a 4A semi-state title. Should be a good time up in Kendall, Vegas. Well, before we get to the biggest classifications, we're going to take a quick time out to catch our breath here on the Highlight Zone. We've got Spartans and Tigers and Saints, oh my, in 6A. Homestead came in undefeated. Would they stay that way after hosting powerhouse Carmel? Warsaw, meanwhile, won its first sectional title last Friday. Could they add a regional championship to the trophy case? And after jumping up to 5A this year, can Dwenger win a regional on the road in West Lafayette against Harrison? We got highlights of all three of those games up next in sports. Don't move! More highlights zone next! Welcome to the Homestead Student Section! And this... This is the Highlight Zone! Yeah! Oh, you gotta appreciate the enthusiasm. My man Justin Kenny of Optima Performance Sports dropping some knowledge on Inside the Zone here this past Monday. He said the first time Homestead and Carmel met back in 1998, the Spartans winning that one 27-3, they went on to play in the state title game that season. Since then, though, these two had met three times with Homestead scoring just 14 points total in three losses. Something we have to give this 6A regional clash. Second ranked Homestead, number five Carmel. Carmel led by the big guy, uh, Penn State bound Cole Brevard, the D lineman, ranked as the number one prospect in the state of Indiana. And this is not how Homestead wanted to start the game. 
first play from scrimmage, it's Carmel's Dylan Downing. 67 yards to the house, and Chad Zolman not happy to start 7-0 in a hole just 20 seconds in. A well, Luke Goody starts to get things going. It's Cam Rogers, the future Miami Red Hawk flying high. Big first down, and then Mr. Touchdown himself, Jake Archbold. With a game for the ages last week, that's a pretty darn good catch. It's a 21-yard touchdown, and we'll tie it 7-all. Homestead hanging very much with Carmel. Why? The defense was playing great. It's Malik Mickens with the tackle for loss for the Spartans, but under a minute left before the half. This is a huge play for the momentum of this game. Christian Williams to Aiden Ellison with 28.6 ticks left in the half. Carmel up 14-7 at the break. Third quarter, it's Zach White, and White rumbles in for the touchdown, and Carmel did not look back as Homestead falls to the Greyhounds 31-7. Homestead's great season ends with a loss to Carmel. They finish the year 11-1. This was the closest team that we've had in my four years here. Um, and a bunch of these guys are some guys I'm never going to forget about. They're going to be my buddies and some of my best friends for the rest of my life. It's a tough loss, and the reason it hurts is because of how much effort and how much uh, work they put in in the off season, in the season, you know, all the things that they did. That's why it hurts, and that's, that should hurt. So I'm proud of them and uh, couldn't be uh, more proud to be associated with a group of seniors. Well said by Coach Zolman. Who? Will Carmel play at semi-state next week? Well, Warsaw coming off the program's first ever sectional title. 12th ranked Tigers at number four, Merrillville. First quarter, it's the Tigers taking advantage. Blake Marsh with the touchdown, and Warsaw up 7-0 early. You're going to see a little more Warsaw. Wyatt Amos making the great throw, and it's Keegan Marsh with the touchdown, and Warsaw out of the gate, on the road, and Merrillville up two scores just like that. Now, Merrillville, oh, the men in purple, they can play some football. Damian Dixon finds his way into the end zone right there as Merrillville gets on the board. Later, though, you're going to see Blake Marsh to Jackson Dawson. Great pitch and catch. Warsaw looking good, but it's Merrillville with the big second half. The Tigers fall at Merrillville 42-28, so it's going to be Merrillville and Carmel next week in 6A. No more 6A teams from Northeast Indiana alive in the postseason. 5A regional title game over in the Lafayette area. Fourth-ranked Bishop Dwenger at seventh-ranked Lafayette Harrison. Brendan Lytle and Dwenger looking good here. Already up two scores in the first. It's Lytle to Griffin Eifert. Eifert with the touchdown, 20-0 Dwenger. And about a minute left before the half, it's Lido in the second quarter with a 41-yard touchdown that was Lido to Michael Lido. Runger wins this one, 35-21. They're going to face number two Valparaiso at Valpo. 80, John Bennett tells me, Friday night, 7.30 is the kick for the game. So mark it on the schedule. We will be there for your Highlight Zone Game of the Week next Friday. we got your Gem of the Night coming up after the break. It's regional time. Who's going to wear the crown? At this point in the season, it seems like every play is a big play, especially when you're playing for the chance to go to semi-state. But only one play can be crowned the best play of the week. And we present you with your regional quality gem of the night. Thanks to our friend Peter Franklin June. has got to go down to Mississippi for this one. And for the second time this season, it's the combo. Bailey Parker to Gage Ernstberger for the touchdown. Take another look at Ernstberger. The kid is a star when it comes to track and field. He can play a little football as well. The one-handed TD catch as East Noble punches its ticket to the 4A semi-state game. They're going to be hosting the Brickies of Hobart next week. Gage Ernstberger is Bailey Parker, your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. Well, let's move on to key games. Next week we got four games on the docket. Bishop Dwenger traveling to Valparaiso, as I mentioned, John Bennett of Bishop Dwenger saying going to be a 7 o'clock, 7.30 kick, I should say. Next Friday night at Valpo, that's your game of the week. Hobart at East Noble, 2A Andrean makes the drive to Eastbrook. And in 1A, Adams Central takes on Lafayette Central Catholic. That should be a good one over in the Lafayette area. In Hoops News, Mad Ants' first road game of the season. They played the first two games at home. They were taking on the main Red Claws. 
early on. This is Nas Mitru Long with the bucket, and he would have himself a night. Mitru Long led the Ants with 28 points. Third quarter action. You're going to see Bryce Brown drill the three, and Stephen Hicks would become the Mad Ants' all-time leading rebounder in this one. Unfortunately, the Ants do fall 103 to 100. The Ants back home on Monday night, 7 o'clock at the Coliseum, when they take on College Park. College Hoops, St. Francis hosting the annual Northern Lakes Insurance Classic. Cougars facing West Virginia Tech. Jeffrey Reynolds, the dish to Connor Lotzenheiser and the Ohio kid with the bucket to nod it early. Antoine Cushingberry now looking and finding Jeffrey Reynolds. Reynolds had 23. That would tie him for the team high. And it would tie him for the team high with a guy you probably know. Huntington Northgrad, Hunter Hollowell doing what Hunter Hollowell does, he buries the three, and St. Francis now 6-0 in the season. They win it 89-70. Girls basketball, 1-0 Carroll facing Leo. This is the Lions' fourth game already this season. And Leo looking like they had some of that synergy going. Jocelyn Roth putting in the deuce. Leo up early on, but Carroll taking over. Emily Parrott with the assist from Olivia Hepner. Hepner had 15, Carroll up by two now early. Then it's Hepner finding Delaney Sheets, feeding it back to Hepner, and Carroll goes on to win this one big time, 76-27 at the Leo Lions. Belmont in the post-Grace Hunter era. The squaws on the road at Woodland to face Gary Cobb and the Warriors. Third quarter action, it's Gabby Joyce who's off to a good start this season. She buries the three for Woodland. Warriors up 21-14. And then it's Taya Kitzmiller finding Dakota Crone. She hits the three, and it's a 24-16 with the lead. Woodland not done. Couple seconds left in the third quarter. Addie Bayman doing what she does. That score of the basketball. Woodland takes a low score over Belmont. 35-25 the final. And Speaking of low scores, the legendary Don Hunter was honored at this one. Northside hosting Huntington North, tipping our cap to our guy Don. First quarter action, Leah Campbell advancing it to Caitlin Arnold. This is the first score of the game. Huntington North out to an early lead. You're going to see Leah Campbell getting it and scoring. This is Huntington North. You saw two buckets, that's all it would take in this game because Northside scored only two. Huntington North wins it 60-2. to two. Our final stop we're talking about on the ice. First of three games for the Kays this weekend. Kays hosting Kalamazoo just 33 seconds in. It's A.J. Jinx finding the net. He lights the lamp for his eighth goal of the season. One zip Kays, still 1-1. Olivia Gallopo with the third goal of the year. Comets win it. 7-2, they're at Cincinnati tomorrow. We'll see you next Friday night for Semi-State.